Welcome to the Nuts and Bolts of Accreditation Part 3 Preparation. This class is sponsored by the International Commission for the Accreditation of Professional Genealogists. My name is Diana Elder and I am an accredited genealogist in the Gulf South region of the United States. The content of this video, as well as the thoughts, views, and opinions expressed herein belong solely to the creator and do not necessarily reflect the views of FamilySearch International and Roots Tech. In part one of this series about the nuts and bolts of accreditation, you learned about the benefits of becoming a, a credential genealogist or an accredited genealogist. And in part two, you learned some of the steps and the process. So in part three, we're going to talk about preparation. What do you need to do to get prepared to start this journey? Well, one of the first things you should do is go to the ICAPGen website and look at the area called Become Accredited and you will find there an accreditation readiness assessment, and that can really help you to determine what you need. Where are you on this process of gaining experience to become a credential genealogist? So I invite you to take a look at that and see with an honest evaluation where you fit. When you pull up the assessment, I would recommend that you print this out and do an honest assessment of your own experience and your skill level. And that will help you to make a plan to bring yourself up to speed with any areas where you're deficient. Three areas of preparation are key for being successful in accreditation, education, research experience, and writing experience. Keep in mind that any work in these various realms can be counted towards your thousand hours of combined research experience and genealogy education. Let's first discuss education. As an experienced researcher, you should realize the importance of education. Accreditation is an opportunity to hone research skills, learn new methodologies, and go in depth in the history and records of your region. The last question of the readiness assessment reads, it is expected that you regularly participate in professional development activities, such as reading books, reading professionally written reports in well-known genealogy publications, attending genealogy conferences and institutes, and watching webinars. So track the hours that you spend in these educational areas. They can count towards your total thousand hours of experience, both in general knowledge and specific to your chosen region. Also, part of the five-year renewal, once you become accredited, accredited, is showing your genealogy education. And as genealogists, we should be continually learning. Be sure to visit the icapgen.org website under Preparation Resources tab to find more education and skill building opportunities. This is a work in progress, adding new materials, so check back often. Next, watch the ICAPGen videos. These were created to help applicants through the accreditation process and to learn skills specific to successful testing. Links for videos are on icapgen.org or easy as just to Google ICAPGen YouTube. Also, watch videos and webinars from other organizations and groups. Videos about methodology, history and geography, record types, and your accreditation region all will help you to improve your research skills and to gain knowledge. Another educational avenue is to take genealogy courses. There are many um, programs through universities and independent groups that offer a full course. Check your syllabus for suggestions and also the ICAPGen website has several ideas for you if you want to take a, a professional level course to hone your skills. Also, conferences are a great way to get some genealogy education. These are held on many levels. Some are online, some are in person. Seek out conferences with classes for your specific research interests. For example, if you are a New York researcher, you could consider the New York State Family History Conference. 
An institute is an intensive course that could be held each day for a week or one day a week for several weeks. The content is very focused on researching in a locality, a methodology, or a record type. Examples of courses could be one entirely on migration, maybe one on African American research, a whole week on land records or military records, English research, writing for clients, so many more topics. See the syllabus for specific institutes that are held in the United States. One very important area is to read genealogy books. Record types, methodology, writing skills, and books on your accreditation region. And as a aspiring accredited genealogists, talk to professionals from your region to see which books they might recommend. Also, you can study professionally written articles. The NGSQ is short for the National Genealogical Society Quarterly, and it has a very esteemed quarterly that publishes articles from researchers, and you can see how professionals solve difficult research cases. You can learn about their records and the methodology, and it's especially beneficial if you find articles in your chosen region to see what kind of resources others are using to solve difficult research cases. Read informational genealogy articles. There are hundreds of top quality magazines, blogs, newsletters, websites, YouTube channels, all to help you with your education. Keep these organized in a digital program like Evernote or OneNote or an app like Pinterest for easy reference. Another great educational opportunity is to read feedback on your writing and this can be done through a study group. We have the level one and level and two and three study groups as part of ICAP Gen and you can apply for these well in advance. Find all the information for that on the ICAP Gen website. This will help you to know how you are doing when compared to your peers and it will give you some really good feedback on areas that you might need to be improving on. There are other study groups as well. There's the ProGen study group, there's GenProof study group. You can Google study groups online to find other places that you could work with others in improving your skills. What about social media? Well, this is a great way to connect and to network with other professionals. And you can look on Facebook. We have a special mentoring group on Facebook called ICAPGen Accreditation Mentoring Group. And this is where you can get specific questions answered as you're working through the process. There are lots of other great places to join groups on social media. Now let's talk about some ideas to gain research experience. So what can you do to get ready for accreditation? Well, first of all, you need to make sure that you know all about the FamilySearch Wiki, and that will have links to so many different jurisdictions that you need to know about as you're preparing for your regional work. So you may want to study the links from the state, for or the province, the country, the county, the town. Make sure you know how to use the Wiki to get information. So from the guide, it says, it is expected that you have experience using a variety of record types from the regional resources document found on the testing regions page for your chosen region. Have you used a variety of record types from the list for your chosen region? So where do you find that list? Well, on the ICAPGEN website, you can look for regional resources document. Here's an example of what the document looks for the Southeast region. This was um, the Gulf South region when I accredited it included two extra states, but those states have been reorganized. The United States has been divided up a little differently. So now it's the Southeast region. So you'll notice that there are important record types to know very well, some to have a good working knowledge and some familiarity. Make sure that you have gone through each of those record types that you must know very well and done 
first of all, really good study from others about how to use them, and then to make sure you practice using those kind of records yourself. It's one thing to watch a webinar about it, to read a book about it, to learn about it. It's another thing entirely to actually use it in your research. So make sure you're getting really good experience with all the record types. So my list of record types here for my region is much different than the list of resources for England or Mexico or Russia. Each research, each resource page on ICAPGEN has additional helps after this. If I were to scroll down, I would see a lot of methodology and repositories. So this is actually an excellent overview of how to be a good researcher, even if you don't want to become accredited. Now let's talk about record types. As you become familiar with the different record types in your region, you need to know how to find each record type, know the date ranges for each record type, know the information found in each record type, and know why the record was created. This might seem overwhelming, but this can all be part of a document that you put together on each record type. Now from the guide, it also says, it is expected that you have used at least 10 of the most relevant repositories for your chosen region. These must include both online, such as archives, libraries, courthouses, and online repositories, such as FamilySearch. For example, two archives, one courthouse, two libraries, and five internet sites would count as 10 repositories. Have you used at least 10 of the most relevant repositories for your chosen region, including both offline and online? So if you're a researcher and you've mainly just been using online sites, you're going to want to broaden your horizons and look for different types of repositories that you can research. Gain experience learning how to access the online and offline repository materials. Most of them will have catalogs and not all of those are easy to use. So learn how to use the catalogs of the important repositories and learn how to use the catalogs at the specific archive that you go to in person. Know how to use these repositories to obtain the records to your best benefit. Knowing how to obtain more difficult records sets you apart as a professional level genealogist. When you find a record that's not online, practice ordering that record. Each repository has different policies about, not, about obtaining documents. Be familiar with the website of each repository and get experience making a phone call or sending an email to the archivist to learn how to get the records once you see that the record is there. Ask questions about it. Start to build some relationships with others. As genealogists, we want to make sure that we have a network of people that we can rely on to help us to obtain the records we need. Learn how to order the lookups and perhaps start a list of people that can do lookups for you at different repositories, people that you've um, built a connection with or built a relationship. Start building those networks. Practice going to a courthouse. If you don't live near your research areas, go to your local courthouse. And this will give you some knowledge of what the records are like and what it's like to actually do courthouse research. And keep in mind that every courthouse will be different and every experience will be different, but you'll start to get some experience and realize what could be available there. Now, the guide also says an applicant must have spent 100 or more hours reading and using old documents in the primary language or languages of your chosen region. So let's talk about this. What does this mean by old documents and how can you get experience working with them? Well, as genealogists, we work in the past. And so we are going to be using documents that may be difficult to read and the handwriting is in a different type of a script. Perhaps we need to do some translating if we're working with another language. And so get a lot of experience. Practice reading, transcribing, and abstracting every record that you work with. 
and it's important to be familiar with different handwriting styles and keep in mind that for the test you won't be asked about any documents written before 1750 so you won't have to go further back than that make it a habit to transcribe every document getting your 100 hours of experience and getting some research skills we have an entire youtube uh, channel video titled Transcription, Abstraction, and Extraction to give you some ideas about how to work on those skills. Now, with your old documents, you'll often find that the terminology and the wording is a little bit different. We call this boilerplate language when there are certain types of words that are always used in a land record or in a probate record. So get used to that. Get used to that language because that will help you as you are learning to transcribe and abstract the documents. Learning how things are worded will actually really help your skills. Writing experience. The guide reads, it is expected that you have experience writing research reports for your own research and or for research that you have accomplished for others. This includes, among other things, being able to show written proof of the conclusions found in your research, using citations and recording your findings in a research log. Check the guide for additional report writing requirements. So do you have this kind of writing experience? If you are a good researcher, but you've never done much writing, this could be an area that you really need to spend some time getting your skills up to the level they need to be at for accreditation. Here's some things to think of as you're working on your writing skills. You need to practice writing a research plan writing an objective, and then thinking of the record types needed to solve a problem. This is an important skill, learning how to solve research problems quickly and efficiently. And we have an entire video on iCaptain video channel, YouTube channel, titled Research Planning. Next, it's important to keep a research log. For one thing, you will, be have to, you will have to turn this in as part of your four generation project, as well as your final project in the level three testing. So this is an important skill to learn, and it's an important habit as a good researcher to have. This sets a professional genealogist apart from the novice, and it saves time in the end. Tracking your sources, writing citation as you research is key to being a good professional researcher. The type of research log that you keep is your personal preference, whether it's in a spreadsheet or a Word document, whatever works for you. Watch the video on the iCaptain YouTube channel research logs to get more ideas about how to set it up and what to include. Now let's talk about analysis and correlation. Writing about sources, information, and evidence. Make sure you understand the, the proper terms for the different types of sources we use in genealogy and the information they hold and the evidence that we use from them. Watch the iCaptain video, Analysis and Correlation of Evidence and Document Interpretation to give you some ideas and help you get started as you're learning how to write about these key things. Document Interpretation. Practice combing through each document to find the important clues. Then practice analyzing and writing about it. It's important to know how to write about the records. It's one thing to look at it and understand what it's telling you as a research, but it's another thing to learn how to write so that someone else can understand it. Practice writing source citations. iCaptain doesn't require a certain citation style, but we do require that you're consistent and that your citations contain all the elements that are needed. So you can use Chicago Manual of Style, you can use Evidence Explained style, uh, style, but one tip is to make a citation template. And once you figure out how to do a really good citation for, say, a census record or a church record, put that in your template. And then you can use that over and over with just adjusting the information. There's an excellent article by Amy Harris, an accredited genealogist, in our publication about becoming an excellent genealogist. And we also have an entire video on our YouTube channel titled Documentation and Source Citations. There's Amy's article. 
this is available, I believe, still on Amazon. It's an excellent, excellent publication with many, many good articles. If there's one takeaway, it's that you need to know the difference between writing a family history narrative and a research report with well-written proofs. The main reason people don't pass level one is that they are writing a fun family history, but they fail to analyze and correlate the sources, information, and the evidence. They did not prove the events and the relationships. So practice writing genealogical proofs. A proof is a section of a report. And you can have very small proofs if you're using direct evidence. If you're having to use a lot of indirect evidence and put together a case, your proof could be a proof argument and it could be pages. So practice writing all different types of proof. And remember, you're trying to prove events, facts, or relationships and trying to make a good, strong conclusion in your writing. One tip is to organize your proofs before writing. Create an outline. Think of all the sources that you're using to put together your proof. What information do you have about the birth, marriage, and death of your person? Organize an outline and then try writing. Practice writing research reports for every research project you conduct. We would like to see you have written at least four to five research reports before you start your level one four generation project. And we have several videos that can help you on the ICAP YouTube channel. Writing an effective research report and models for a well-written proof analysis of correlation of evidence. Then periodically check the accreditation readiness assessment to see how you are progressing. See if you're making progress in each of those areas that you printed out and had your initial assessment. And as you gain your skills, you'll eventually become ready to submit and start the process of becoming an accredited genealogist professional. Your journey to become an accredited genealogist starts with preparation. Th thanks for watching and good luck in your quest to earn the accredited genealogist credential. Be sure to check out all the other great content for Roots Tech. And thank you again for watching.